Hello and welcome back to our Glass Cannon series and uh, yeah, you're actually here to welcome the death of Mr. Lucon himself. He is of course, or he was of course, the liege of the Northern Empire. Now, uh, before we actually begin this episode, I just want to say <laughs> props to those of you, and uh, I'm talking about real big props to those of you that got the joke and uh, actually participated in it a little bit in the comment section very much appreciated because that is uh i i got a, a hearty chuckle out of a lot of um a lot of your comments so i uh i do appreciate that and uh, for those of you that didn't get the joke uh i'm not sh i'm not kind of sure what you're thinking because here's the thing i've never been one um, I've never been one to use those kinds of uh, content creator strategies um, to basically do those kinds of uh, titles or anything like that. And and generally, I think you should kind of know that. I, I don't know whether you've just subscribed like yesterday or something. I don't really know, but you should really know that. I mean, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not gonna you know. I'm not going to shame you or anything, but I'm basically just going to say, hey, you know what? I'm I'm not that kind of that con that kind of content creator. I don't do those kinds of those kinds of titles ever, really. And uh, if I do do those kinds of titles, it's always in the form of a joke or, you know, it's always a parody of something that I've seen and I just think it's amusing and uh rather uh, you know a rather funny thing to to go about doing and that's it yeah it's never uh, you know uh, in a serious fashion because for me specifically i think that in general if my content which admittedly can become a little bit repetitive because obviously the game itself only gives me a certain amount of things that i can do in a certain um, certain limited number of situations, then, yeah, okay, you know, definitely if it becomes a little bit competitive, uh, I mean competitive, a little bit of, a little bit repetitive, then, of course, yeah, that's, that's just how it is, but I'm not going to use those kinds of strategies to get people to click on the video, that just doesn't make sense to me, because, as I say, if the content becomes repetitive, and you don't want to watch it anymore, then that's absolutely fine, because, Again, I'm, I, I'm either not doing a good enough job in making it entertaining, which, in, admittedly, yes, I sometimes don't do a good enough job, and i got to do better. But I'm not going to use a strategy where I say something happened in the video where it's going to force you to click on it. I don't want to do that, and generally, I feel like... You know, the, uh, people that do that, that's absolutely fine. You know, if they want to go ahead and do that, that is really not that big a deal to me. Because generally, I I think that some of the time, some people that do that, they have some entertaining content. And generally, I think that's okay. You know, if they want to go about doing it that way, then that's absolutely fine. And generally, it has worked for a lot of people. Because they genuinely have very good content. And, and they're quite entertaining people in itself. I, on the other hand, am a little bit of a, I, I, I don't want to say acquired taste, but yes, I am kind of one of those people that isn't really in the mainstream, let's just say that. And if you want to feel very special for being subscribed to me, please do, because uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just joking. I mean, generally, yes, you are indeed very special for uh, watching me, and I very much appreciate that. But what I am saying is, I'm not very mainstream in the way that I do things. I uh, I have a bit of a... I, I have been told that I have a very dry sense of humor. And, um, you know, maybe you agree with that. Maybe you disagree with that. I don't know. But uh, I, I guess if that's, if that's what I have, then that's what I have, you know? We kind of have to go with that. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to say I really very much appreciate uh, all of you and even those of you that didn't get the joke, you know, hopefully you get the joke now. If you actually um, are still here, because let's face it, I think <laughs> I think a bunch, a bunch of people didn't really appreciate the joke that much. Uh, even though, as I say, you kind of should know me by now. Uh, you, you, you know, you can take a look at, at my uh, my video library, and you can basically see 
what I'm all about, you know, you could see that, yeah, I generally don't give my titles the most exciting, mm, I don't know, the most exciting pizzazz, uh, you know, that they could possibly have. But that's, that's in general the whole point. You know, I'm not actually wanting to do that because most of the time you know what you're going to get. That's the thing. You know what you're going to get. And if I am going to change the style of the way that I make videos, then I'm probably going to do that with a new series or at the start of a new series and you're going to see that new style straight away and it's not going to be a case of oh I'm surprised that this this particular content creator has changed their style mid-series and it just doesn't make any sense so you know sometimes I've done that and I've done a little bit of a test and I've tried a, a couple of um, newer things out and I've just kind of then asked you oh, how, how do you feel about this you know that sort of thing and some of the time it actually works quite well, but other times, no. <laughs> some of the times, no, no, it doesn't work some of the time. But um, yeah, you know, I, I just kind of wanted to say thanks very much. And um, well, I'm getting murdered, as you could quite clearly tell. I am getting absolutely murdered, but hopefully we're going to be okay. I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about this, got to say. A little bit worried about it. Oh, nice hit. Nice hit. Yeah, so if you uh, didn't catch that because I've obviously been blabbing on for a little bit of time about that whole thing, um, you know, but I, I just wanted to basically just express my appreciation. But uh, other, apart from that, we've declared war against the Vlandians. Yes, we've declared war against them. And now I am doing battle with a very large army who attacked us as we were besieging one of their castles. And now I am in a, a rather bad situation. I think I'm actually going to retreat. Yes, I am actually going to retreat. Usually I will not do this, but I'm going to retreat for a very specific reason. I actually want to just take a quick look. Yeah, they have a massive amount of banner knights. That is the main reason why we're having so many difficulties. How, how many people do we have remaining? I've lost 37 bear assassins. I think we might still... Oh, actually, I'm going to have to try to get away here. 36 soldiers. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm going to have to try and escape because it's not going to work. Um... I will consider this, yeah, so on and so forth. Okay, yeah, it is just not going to work. I, I, I think, uh, in general, I bit off a little bit more than I could chew there, and, uh, yeah, well, it's it's okay. It's okay, because we've escaped. We have not been defeated, which, actually, uh, that, was, that was pretty cool. You know, I got to say, I actually feel like when we have these kinds of situations, when I have a situation when I could be potentially eliminated and defeated... It kind of gives me, um, it kind of gives me renewed vigor, you know what I mean? Renewed vigor for being able to destroy the opponent, being able to achieve victory against the odds. Because especially in that particular situation, you saw how easily the enemy was able to overrun us. And it's actually kind of, um, well, a bit scary, to be honest. A bit scary that they were able to so easily overwhelm us, but... That's how it goes sometimes. That's how it goes. And um, yeah, well, hopefully I will be able to conduct myself a little bit better in the upcoming fights. And we'll maybe be able to eliminate the Vlandians because that was obviously my plan for this episode. So let's see if we can actually do that, shall we? Anyway, I'm just going to try and I'm going to buy some more food. I'm actually going to buy a huge amount of food right here so that I have enough for the upcoming campaign. I'm going to try and take Varek Sand Castle. I was actually going to go for Talavel Castle, but obviously, as you can tell, there was a pretty large army there, and it's probably unlikely I'm going to be able to go back there and get a significant amount of progress. Ooh, hello. Ooh, I could, I could probably take this guy. I think I could probably take this guy. I don't think the, the combat strength he has is accurate at the moment. Or is it? I don't think it's accurate, because here's the thing. Um, a number of people have actually asked me uh, in the comments beforehand, what is the uh, what is the number in the brackets? Okay, so the number in the brackets is basically a mod that I have. Uh, you can check my mod list down in the, down in the description, by the way. Uh, a number of people have asked me what mods I'm using. You can always find my mod list in the description with the mod load order as well, so you don't have to ever search for it or anything like that. It's just right down there. 
Oh, they have a bunch of bear assassins. This guy has a bunch of bear assassins in his army. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah, uh, that was unintended. That is a very unintended side effect of the My Little Warband tweak that I made, where I enabled the AI the ability to recruit my own custom units. That has actually made me a little bit dubious now. Right. Okay, actually, you know what? I might try to persuade this guy. Because he is the leader. Oh, no, I can't do that because he's in an army. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Okay, yeah. I was actually going to attempt to persuade him and pay him a lot of money. I was going to pay him, I think, about 250000 or something. I think making it 250000 is a pretty significant amount of money. And uh, generally, I feel like that would make it quite balanced for us to do it that way. Now I'm a little bit worried because now we are in a situation where the enemy has access to our own units. That's actually kind of crazy. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. New title incoming. It's going to be... You won't believe what just happened. We've been betrayed by... Um, <clears throat> the Bear Assassins, I guess. Yeah, that's way too long. That's not going to work. That is not going to work. But um, yeah, I, I guess you won't believe this. Yeah, that will certainly work a second time, won't it? I mean, I'm sure it does for some people. But uh, yeah, no, I'm not going... <laughs> generally, I'm not going to use those kinds of titles anyway. But... Yeah, for the sake of the joke, you get it. Anyway, let me see if I can maybe get into a nice nice formation here. And, uh, oh yeah, don't worry, by the way. I have seen a, a couple of people basically pleading with me because I have been so incredibly stupid with my infantry positioning in uh, um, most of the battles so far. And yes, you are 100% correct. I have been. So I do need to be a little bit more careful about um, placing them in the front because, let's face it, they have no shields. They will very easily get murdered if I uh, don't actually, um, you know, take care of them a little bit more. And uh, I will try to do that. So, you know, don't worry. I will try to maintain our infantry population li a little bit better than I have been. And um, my archers are still not within effective range, which is kind of giving uh, this can not so great. So let me actually just tell them to hold fire for the moment. Yeah. Now that I know that the enemy has a bunch of our own archers on their side, I am very worried because my archers are pretty good. I think I'm actually being shot by my archers right now, or should we say by my um, archer units, because they have some long range. They've got some pretty good long range. You can see here that we're able to avoid them pretty easily. I'm surprised I only took two damage. Maybe they are not the archers that I'm thinking of then. These are not the archers you're looking for. Yes, indeed. Wave of the hand. These are the archers you're looking for, and I will now start to fire at will with my own. Let's see if we can do some damage. Once they're in range. Okay, I'm getting shot a little bit. I got shot in the neck, that's okay. Oh yeah, by the way, um, a number of people have been talking about the, um, the lightly armored thing. So in other words, uh, I did actually intend to play with as lightly armored units as possible. Well, that's actually what I am what I am trying to do here. Most of my units do not have very good armor on. They have very light armor. I mean, it may seem like they're wearing some pretty good stuff, but generally they're wearing scale scale mail with about 30 body armor, and that's pretty much it. I'm I don't know whether I can even get get away with um, having lighter armor than that because. I mean, you can quite clearly tell. Look at how much damage we're currently taking here. It might be a bit too hard in that case. It might be very, very difficult for us to actually get any results whatsoever if I uh, remove the armor on my forces any further. So that's, that's kind of what's going on there. It's just literally a case of, is it, is it viable? Is it viable for me to do that? Because if it's not viable, then there's no point, because then I won't be able to win any battles. Um, <laughs> so I'm not too sure, because at the moment, I have found that armor doesn't really make that much difference. So maybe, maybe I could do it. Maybe I could remove the armor. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Generally, for my own, uh, for my own character, I kind of feel like I want to keep my armor on at least 
for now because you can see here i mean literally if i had no armor on at this point i'd probably i'd probably be dead you know admittedly i'd probably be dead and that would be uh well probably not the most riveting gameplay that you've ever seen because it's literally going to be a case of oh i'm in the oh i'm dead yes i'm in the battle oh i'm, I'm dead you know that's kind of what would happen in those cases and uh that's kind of yeah, kind of not something I'd want. I, I would like to try and at least be in the battle a little bit. So it's not it's not a, really a case of me... Uh, yeah, like that, for example. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. It's not really a case of me um, forgetting about that. It's more a case of, well, can I do it and actually make it fun to watch and fun to play? Because... Mm, yeah, as you could see right there, I literally just walked into a bunch of crossbowmen and got myself murdered. And I mean, to be fair, yeah, that's probably going to happen in the grand scheme of things most of the time. But it's a case of, is it going to be worth it? Is it going to be worth it for me to do that? I don't know. Uh, I mean, following along the, the glass cannon sort of thing. Oh no, I've just killed one of my own bare elite archers. I mean, I can't really help it because they are on the enemy's side. But yeah, that is not a good feeling. That is not a good feeling whatsoever. But we can't really do anything about it. We do have to eliminate them as best we can. We still have arrows, thankfully, so that's pretty good. Let's tell my uh, infantry to charge in. I'm actually not entirely sure what they're doing. I think they might be... I think they are actually doing tactics. I don't know whether we want them... Do we want them to do tactics? Or do we want them to just charge in? Yeah, beats me at the moment. Beats me. I really don't know. Ooh, bear assassin. Ooh, they are so easy to kill. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but they... I mean, obviously, I do know because they have very light armor, but generally, um, <laughs> I wouldn't have expected them to be so easy to kill. But I guess they are, indeed. I mean, we could see that from that previous engagement that we had with that um, somewhat larger army. They weren't that much larger than us in terms of numbers, but they were able to eliminate many, many of our forces without too many worries on their part at all. Anyway, I'm just going to tell my everyone to charge in now. And I believe that is indeed going to be a victory for us. I am trying to keep our surgeon alive at the moment. And there you go. Fantastic. Okay, so we actually ended up losing 32 units. Not too bad. And we eliminated a relatively large enemy force, which I am pretty happy about. And we have four... 420. Mm -hmm. We have, yes, 420,000 gold. So that's the reason why it might actually make sense for me to speak to Servic. And um, maybe we can get him to join us, which would be pretty advantageous. If we can get him to join us, he's going to bring over Rovolt, which is one of the larger fiefs in the Vlandian territory. And that might make sense, right? That might make sense, yeah. Might be, uh, might be an idea. Anyway, let me see if I can just recruit a couple of extra units. Oh yeah, look at that. This is actually a pretty cool village for noble units. Tormelina, apparently, is a place where you can get noble units. This is also one where you can get noble units. Druimor, okay, not too bad, not too bad. And Kalias Castle has 265 units in it. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I actually forgot to do that one thing. Mm, I would like to attack this person, if at all possible. Do I need to buy some more horses, by the way? I feel like I'm kind of slow. Huh. I, I might need to buy some more horses. At the moment, we have... Um, wait a minute. Uh, 61. Hmm. 0.61, that is. Yes, 0.61. We might need to buy some more horses. I am going to buy every single horse that they have available, and then I will be selling all of this stuff. Look at that, another 41,000. Very nice indeed. And we can also sell all of the prisoners for another 43,000. So we have now just crested over the 500,000 level, and Servic is right there, and he has 29 relation with us, and I will be able to speak to him straight away. Okay, so... Let's see whether we can persuade him. It's, pro it's probably going to be pretty easy because, let's face it, his cost is going to be very low. But you also then have to bear in mind that we are spending a lot of money here. So let's have a look. I'm going to spend 250000 That is going to literally be the base amount from now on 
for any vassal to join us because if we continually persuade people because let's face it i could get him for 25k as you can see right here i can literally get him for 25k i could probably get him for 10k no i couldn't get him for 10k but i could get him for 15 yeah i could easily get him for 15,000, which is just absolutely ridiculous um it, i mean in a in a balancing way i think it's okay i think that's absolutely fine but for this series specifically i'd like to make it a little bit more costly so i'm going to pay him two hundred and fifty thousand, and he is going to now join us there we go okay fantastic so revolt is now ours which is actually quite nice i i, I kind of appreciate that and now we will be making our way over to Callius, and oh, apparently we have a decision to make here. Uh, Pendrake Castle, that should go to a Batanian, so I'm going to give that to Melodia. That makes the most sense. I believe Melodia has done Glanis or Kerban Seth. No, he has. He has Kerban Seth, and Pendrake Castle is right next to it. So proximity-wise, that makes the most sense. And we are going to be attempting to take this. Okay, so I am actually wondering now, should I even bother doing anything in regards to destroying the walls? Because I'm thinking maybe not. I don't know. Hmm. Let me see. Let me build some catapults, actually. Oh, wait a minute. Gotta be careful not to get attacked, to be honest. Yeah, I think I might be attacked relatively soon, so I might just have to go in, whether I like it or not. Let me see. Ah, there's the large army. Yep, there we go. Hello there. All right, so yeah, we're just going to put out one catapult. And then we're going to head on in and see what we can do. All right. Uh, hmm. I'm, I'm not sure what we can do now. Do we want to... Hmm. I think we're just going to do the standard. We're not going to go in, obviously. Not not like regular infantry would go in. But we're going to do the standard in the case of, you know, what we can do with archers. Which is basically just place them outside and hope that they deal massive damage to the enemy on the battlements and things like that. That is probably going to be the, the best thing that we can do. And we're going to put them on a bit of a hill. Seems like we have a nice hill here. Wait a minute. What's going on over there? We have... Oh, this is a... Oh, this is a very interesting... Oh, okay. Yeah, this is a very interesting castle layout. Oh, this is actually perfect for uh, our archers, in my opinion. This is really, really good for our archers. It's going to be so, so powerful for them to be able to um, get to the enemy's positions and then just have a clear line of sight to be able to shoot them. I think we might actually have a pretty decent time here. I mean, yeah, you can see here we've got. This is this is a really strange layout, but I, I I'm I'm not saying I I don't like it. I'm saying that I find it very um. It's very intriguing because, on the one hand, you've got this um. This little section of castle on the left, right? Yeah, you know, left, right. <laughs> yes. So castle section on the left, and then a castle section on the right, and you have like a. A weird sort of bridge. It is actually a bridge. Yes, a bridge that connects the two. Uh, that's very interesting. Okay, I don't think I've I've seen one of these in a long time. It's going to be pretty cool to fight inside this, that's for sure. Nice headshot. Just going to try and eliminate more of these guys if I can. Try and get a little bit more bow skill in the process, of course. Nice. There we go. In the neck. Ooh, I'm getting a little bit better with this bow, apparently. I'm, I'm actually getting some nice, accurate shots here. You won't believe what just happened. I shot an enemy and hit him. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I, I think that actually you probably wouldn't believe that. <laughs> but, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's the internet, you know, people, people might believe anything at this point. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Anyway, let me see if I can maybe just survive a little bit longer. All I need to, all I, come on now, come on now. 
9 out of 10 dentists believe I can survive for another 10 seconds. Maybe. I mean, if no one's shooting me, then yeah, I think I probably will be able to, without too many difficulties, actually, but you never know. Oh, nice, got him. Got him just before he was about to run over into that small little small little um, protective area there. Mm, okay, so now, where do we want to go? What do we want to do? Ah, uh, hmm. Should I tell my forces to charge in? Or should I tell them to just relax? I don't know. Because right now, the enemy is being extremely stupid. What are they doing? Look at this. <laughs> yeah, you won't believe this. The AI is not defending themselves. This is kind of interesting. Okay. Yeah, that, that is very weird. They seem to be lowering their shields and allowing me to shoot them square in the torso. That is... That is very strange. I would not have expected them to do this one bit, but apparently they are. I mean, they're raising them up sometimes, but they are in intermittently lowering their shields. Have you noticed this? This is a bit weird. It seems like I have found a loophole. A potential loophole that can make the realistic battle AI um, well, kind of space out a little bit. That is amusing, to say the least. Very, very amusing. Oh, I'm being pushed from behind now. Yes, now the enemy... Oh, look, look, now they're attempting to attack us. How dare you. Get out of here, sir. Get out of here. You are not welcome in this place. You shall not pass, even though technically they are the ones defending. They should be the ones shouting the uh, the Gandalfism. And, uh, yes, let me see here. Uh, no, no, everything's fine. Everything is absolutely fine. I'm, I'm alive! Oh my! I am alive. Can you believe it? Because I certainly cannot. Very nice indeed. Okay, there we are. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. Okay, we actually survived. Massive amounts of experience for our forces too. And I can actually, um, well, rescue a bunch of troops here too. I think I might do that because I would like to place them in the garrison here. I think that's going to be uh, a kind of nice thing to do. I'm not going to claim the fief because I'd actually like to give this to someone. Mm, oh, it is a Vlandian. Oh, it is a Vlandian culture. Ooh, that might be a little bit tricky, but I think I can probably give it to Cervic then, in that case. I think giving it to Cervic is probably going to be the best possible, um, shall we say, resolution for it uh, that we can do. Better than, it, it, I mean, it's better than 1280 by 720. <laughs> oh my, I'm going to show myself out for that terrible, terrible joke. But uh, yes, in any way, um, yes, uh, I... <laughs> You know what? I'm sure some people will actually believe what I'm what I'm talking about right there. Anyway, let's have a look here. Uh, yeah, I think we're good. Okay, we're absolutely fine. Let's go into the dungeon here, place a bunch of the prisoners in there too. And we are going to have to wait here for some time because you never know whether the army nearby is going to attempt to launch a retaliatory strike against us. But it seems like they are deciding against it for the moment, which is actually quite nice of them. I don't know why they decided against it, because it's... I mean, I think it would be pretty easy for them to take this back. Uh, Cervic is going to get this, because, let's face it, we want someone that owns it that has the same culture, because then they're going to be getting the loyalty increases and everything, and it's just going to make a, a, whole, a whole big mess so much simpler and so much easier for us to manage. Anyway. Uh, oh, the owner of Garantor Castle. Someone took Garantor Castle? Cool. Okay, I had no idea. Okay, so Garantor Castle is another Vlandian fief, as far as I can tell. You know, you know what this screen is missing right now? You know what this screen is missing right here? The Garantor Castle screen? It's missing the culture. And unless you know where it is... Um, wait a minute. Is it literally Empire? Is Garantor an Empire fief? I thought it was a Vlandian fief. See, shows how much I know, eh? Shows how much I know. But yes, it does actually show the culture here if you mouse over the villages. So I suppose they don't need it up here in the main stats. But um, I think for ease of simplicity, 
it would probably be a good idea to have the culture be somewhere else. Like you just put culture, blah, 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 whatever it may be over here or something. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you can find it out yourself just by mousing over. So I suppose it's not necessary. Anyway, uh, Faron, Faron, he is going to be getting this. He is indeed an Empire vassal, so it makes the most sense for him to get it. If it is indeed where I think it is, because Garantor I, th I, You know what? I think I keep getting mixed up between Garantor Castle and Ormanfard Castle, you see. And Garantor Castle is actually all the way over here, and that makes sense for it to be an Empire fief. And Ormanfard is all the way over here, and that is, of course, a Vlandian fief. So, of course... Yeah, there. I don't know why, but I get mixed up between the two every single time I play the game. I really have no idea. I can basically name every single other castle location in and around Vlandia, Batania, and maybe some of the Empire as well, without too many difficulties, because let's face it, they all have relatively different naming structures. But for some reason, Ormanfard and Garantor Castle, they sound very interchangeable. They sound like one or the other could be Empire, one or the other could be Vlandian. I don't know what it is, but it's just a bit of a weird, weird little uh, idiosyncrasy that I uh, seem to have with that, um, you know, with that with that pair of fiefs. Anyway, I'm going to be moving on and we'll see if we can actually take Ormanfard Castle. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to take it. Yeah, I'm not going to take it because there's a very large army nearby. I think the best thing that I can do right now is actually to auto-resolve against a bunch of these vassals in the area and just pretty much try to eliminate the amount of um, relatively strong units in the area. Oh, I should have taken those prisoners. Okay, that was my bad. I actually thought I took them, but apparently I didn't. Okay, well... Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter in the in the grand scheme of things, you know, 40 or so prisoners or however many they had. Not the biggest, not the biggest problem, is it? No, not the biggest issue. Anyway, there we go. Ah, hmm. Okay, so Ostakan and Turby Castle, they are going to be the, uh, the things we have to deal with soon enough. So let's actually take a look. Yeah, Turby Castle is always one of those castles where I am a little bit dreading it. I'm, I'm always dreading taking Turby Castle, and I don't know why, but it always has a very significant garrison for being just a castle, because it's so out of the way, most of the time, enemy units tend not to bother with it. And it's so deep into Vlandian territory too, so generally it's never going to be besieged by anything random as well. And uh, who owns Ostakun, by the way? Hekars. Oh, I really want to persuade Hecard to join us right now. I really want to persuade him, but I only have 265,000. So if I were to persuade him, we would only have 15,000 remaining, which I think might be a little bit too dear to our uh, to our bankruptcy levels. So I don't really want to do that right now, but I am so tempted. I am very, very tempted about that. I think that could be... That could be amazing. That really could be super, super good to do, but... Ooh, I don't know. I don't know whether we can get away with that. 15,000? I mean, if I had a little bit more, then I think we might be okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not, not doing too badly, right? I mean, I'm not doing too badly, I suppose. I mean, look, we just gained another 42,000, and we gained a little bit from the, um, from the prisoners too, so I might be able to do it. Hmm. It would certainly eliminate one of the more difficult sieges that we are going to have to do. So, I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comments, actually. Let me know in the comments if you actually want me to uh, get Hecard to join us, because if not, I will have to do some of the most difficult siege gameplay that you're going to see, probably, with the exception of Pencanok, of course. Let's not talk about Pencanok. I still have nightmares about that place. But otherwise, I think that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.